I kept seeing those bubbles in my hair and I kept thinking I'm low porosity. I kept seeing those bubbles on my hair and I kept thinking that I'm low porosity and then one day it just hit me. How could I have overcomplicated something that was so simple and matter of fact. Hi guys, my name is Michelle and I create hair, makeup and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Today we're talking about hair porosity. So if that sounds like something that interests you, then keep watching. Alright, so today we're talking about hair porosity and Google says that hair porosity is the ability of the hair to absorb and retain moisture. So when you're trying to judge your hair porosity, that is the only question that you need to ask yourself. Does your hair absorb moisture? And if it does, does it hold it in or does it spit it out? So ask yourself, what does deep conditioning do to my hair? Does my hair just go and soak it up? And what does my natural hair without any product look like anyway? Does it look really, really damaged and lifeless? Or is it like super virgin and really nice? These are the only two questions that I needed to ask myself to determine my hair porosity yet. I watched video after video and complicated something that was supposed to be so easy to begin with. Let me explain. Hair porosity is the ability of the hair to absorb and retain moisture. When you're following CG, you are putting a lot of product into your hair. So ask yourself, is that moisture being absorbed by your hair? Or is that moisture just sitting on top of your hair? and not really going in. If you are unable to answer this question, then ask yourself, what kind of refresh does your hair prefer? Do you do a no product refresh? Or do you absolutely need product when you are refreshing your hair? Now let me explain. If your hair is high porosity, then that means that it absolutely loves deep conditioning, which means that the moment you introduce conditioner or deep conditioning into your routine, your hair is going to be so happy. Instantly, you are going to notice that you have beautiful moisturized curls. But if your hair is low porosity, then you will notice that the moisture really didn't go in Instead, you have more product building up on your hair. It feels really, really greasy and it didn't really do you any benefit. Now, when I'm talking about deep conditioning and low porosity, I'm talking about deep conditioning without any heat. So please keep that in mind. I'll explain in a bit. So now let's talk about refreshing your hair. Are you deep conditioned and your hair looked really nice and really beautiful? And then suddenly on day three or day four, when you go to refresh, you realize that, hey, my hair looks so dry. I put so much product on, it was looking so good, but it feels like I don't have any product on my hair. And now that I'm going to refresh, I definitely need to put some product and refresh my hair. If this is you, then you know for sure that you have high porosity hair. But if you have low porosity hair, and you did the drill on day one, your hair is looking really nice and everything. But on day three or day four, when you go to refresh, you realize that, hey, I've lost curl pattern. So I've lost definition, but my hair still has a lot of product on it. That means that you probably have low porosity hair. Now, how do you know if you're normal or medium porosity? If this is you, then your hair does not have any problems absorbing the moisture and it does not have any problems retaining the moisture. So ask yourself, what did my hair look like on day one? Nice, moisturized, yes. And then after that, what happened throughout the week? If your hair is having absolutely no trouble and you have sealed your hair with a gel or a styler 
and your hair is being able to retain that moisture throughout the week or whenever you wash next then that probably means that you have normal or medium porosity hair whereas if your hair is drinking up product and spitting it out really really fast then you know for sure that you have high porosity hair like me now if you still haven't been able to answer that question then you can try this the next wash day try to use a little extra product ask yourself did my hair absolutely love it and when i finished washing my hair it didn't seem like i added any extra product it looked great it looked fabulous it just drank up that additional product or maybe on day 1 it looked yeah a little greasy but then on day 2 and day 3 it looked fantastic and it looked like okay this is the perfect balance of product then you know for sure that your hair drank in the product and spat it out and you have high porosity hair so essentially this question of is my hair being able to retain that moisture that i put into it or if it is spitting it out this question will determine whether you have high porosity hair or not because if you have high porosity hair then your hair is definitely going to look pretty dry and moistureless on day 3 and day 4 now there is a test where you look at your drying time so you wash your hair and no product no styler no leave in no nothing and you check the drying time and you check to see if your hair dries really fast or if it takes really long to dry and based upon the time you can know your hair porosity but this is not going to be accurate and it might not answer your question about hair porosity because let me just tell you that we as human beings are very self critical it isn't a question of self esteem it is just normal human fact that when it comes to ourselves we're not the best judges so we tend to assume the worst Besides that depending on which country you live in the weather conditions the humidity etc drying time is going to differ so that is not a very reliable test to my thinking at least hair porosity is also about the cuticle right and whether it is open or shut now let's just look at a picture of high porosity hair so this is what your hair is going to look like as you can see the cuticle is very open Second let's look at a picture of normal or medium porosity hair. So you can see the cuticle is not that open but it does allow moisture to go in and to come out. Now lastly let's look at low porosity hair. Here you can see that the cuticle is completely shut and it doesn't really want to allow any moisture to go in or come out. So let's ask ourselves what causes the cuticle to be permanently open or somewhat open or not open at all if you have virgin hair which means that you have not manipulated your hair ever at all you have never straightened your hair you haven't colored your hair or if you have then maybe you've done it like for a special occasion but you haven't been super excessive about it your hair is not abused then it is a very good indication that you have low porosity hair but if you have like me straightened and colored your hair very very often i know for sure that my hair has been abused if this sounds like you then there's a very good likelihood that you have high porosity hair on the other hand if you have somewhat straightened your hair i mean yeah you've done it like maybe once a month and yes you have colored your hair so maybe you've done it like once a year or twice a year max to max then there's a very good likelihood that you have normal porosity hair forget about those bubbles okay i'm going to insert footage right here of my hair and my mother's hair and as you can see you will see those bubbles Now they say that if you see the bubbles when you get your hair wet that means that your hair takes a really long time to get wet and therefore you have low porosity hair but look my hair high porosity my mother's hair high porosity that bubble test is not really accurate at least when it came to my hair and my mother's hair now you've also heard about taking a few strands of hair and putting it in a glass of water now if it floats then you know that you have low porosity hair and if it sinks then you know that you have high porosity hair but look i have done this so many times and each time i got different results 
and I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say that hey, you should have done this on product-free hair. Well, my little kittens, that is exactly what I did. But the results were always variable. I'm sure the test is reliable, but I'm sure our water, depending on where you live, probably has things in it different minerals so this is not an accurate way to judge your hair porosity either now look the combination of those bubbles and the floating or not floating of my hair was enough to confuse me to death and i was totally stumped i had no idea what my hair porosity was but if you actually think about it the answer is so matter of fact and there's no point confusing yourself so again I am going to repeat, hair porosity is about the hair's ability to absorb and retain moisture. So therefore, you have to ask yourself the first time you deep conditioned, what happened to your hair? Or forget deep conditioning, even when you use leave-in conditioner for the first time, your very first CG wash and you did it quite well okay which means your technique was on point the amount of product that you used was on point everything was on point did you suddenly see remarkable results did your hair look super moisturized if it did and the appearance of your hair was completely different which means that it looked super glossy and super moisturized and that is a very good indication of high porosity hair and then you have to ask yourself what happened on day three and day four is it that your hair absorbed that moisture but it completely let it go did it seem lifeless and it was like as if you hadn't done any of that then you have high porosity hair but if your hair absorbed that moisture and had no problem retaining that moisture then you have normal porosity hair but if you deep conditioned or by mistake you added a little extra product and your hair looked so greasy and it remained that day for the whole week then you know that you have low porosity hair now let us just look at these three hair types the first one is of course off me before cgm this is what my hair looked like now in the middle right here we have my friend amrapali's hair and this is what her hair looked like before cgm and lastly, you have my friend Anka's hair. And this is what her hair looked like before CGM. Now, I either straightened or curled my hair every single day for the last 10 years. My mother straightened her hair once a week for the last 10 years. I have colored my hair once in three months for the last 10 years. And my mother has colored her hair once a month for the last 10 years. By looking at the hair, you can definitely see that these two people have damaged hair. Now, I'm not asking you to judge the dryness of the hair because look, low porosity hair can also be dry, okay? I'm asking you to judge the damage in these pictures, not the dryness. Judge the damage. Now, Pali straightened her hair, I think maybe once a month or maybe twice a month. For the last yeah i would say five to ten years and pali does color her hair but she doesn't have that problem of graying so if she does color her hair she colors it once or twice a year this is what pali's hair looks like pre-cgm and lastly let's look at my friend anka's hair now before you think that anka's hair is not curly anka has beautiful 2a hair so this is her hair before CGM. As you can see, it doesn't look very damaged. Now, Anka has also colored her hair, but Anka has colored her hair like once or twice in her entire life. And if she's ever used a straightener, I think she's used it three, four times in the year. Not more than that at all. So it's not like Anka has purely virgin hair either. Now, me and my mom have high porosity hair. Amrapali has medium porosity which means normal porosity hair and Anka has low porosity hair. When my mother's hair or my hair is deep conditioned, our hair looks excellent. It is so shiny, it is so beautiful. But on day two and day three you'll wonder where did that deep conditioner go because the hair looks very dry and very lifeless. But the difference that our hair shows 
when we deep condition is significant. Now, I have 2B hair which means that I have wavy hair and you've heard that if you have wavy hair then you should probably not use very heavy products. Well, I'm here to tell you that my hair absolutely loves it. As long as I don't go overboard and use boo coodles of it. So, 4 pumps of conditioner is absolutely perfect for my hair but also consider my length. My hair absolutely loves deep conditioning and my hair absolutely loves protein. But look, we're not going to talk about protein and moisture balance in this video. I'm going to put that in another video so that you don't get confused. Now my hair absolutely loves protein. My hair absolutely loves moisture. But if I don't seal my hair in with a gel, then I am doomed. Which is why you'll also see me go a little overboard with my gel. When I deep condition my hair, I don't need heat. And when I say heat, I don't mean a blow dryer. I'm talking about one of those flaxseed heat caps. I can do without it. Now let's look at Amrapali's hair. Now Amrapali's hair does not have any problem with moisture. So even if she doesn't deep condition, it doesn't look all that bad. It looks nice and moisturized. Her hair has no problem allowing moisture to enter and exit. Her curls hold very, very well. And she does not have that trouble with habitual dryness. Whereas Anka's hair has a lot of trouble with conditioner. So whenever she uses any conditioner that is not water-based, it tends to look very heavy on her hair. Now, Anka's hair really struggles with moisture entering it, which means that her hair does not allow moisture to enter easily. What she needs to do is when she is conditioning or deep conditioning, she definitely would benefit from a flaxseed heat cap. When she washes her hair, she should probably use some warm water. Any formula that is water-based, will be Anka's best friend. She is not a fan of butters and heavy products. My hair is a fan of butters and heavy products. So Anka would need to limit silicones, proteins, heavy oils and butters that can cause buildup to her hair because her hair has the tendency to have buildup quite frequently. Anka would need to use clarifying ingredients and chelating ingredients in her routine quite often, which means to say more frequently than six weeks. Anka would need to use light water-based moisturizers. So when you look at your conditioner or your leave-in, generally if you see that the first ingredient is water, then you'll know that it is a water-based conditioner. The Just Herbs White Water Lily conditioner is a water-based conditioner. So her hair would probably love that. Anka would really benefit from steam refreshes, basically anything that has to do with a little bit of heat, her hair would love. And Anka should limit proteins, silicones, any butters, any waxes, any oils in her routine. Anka could absolutely do with a no product refresh. Amrapali could absolutely do with a no product refresh. I could definitely not do with a no product refresh. Now again, I'm asking you not to consider the dryness of the hair, I am by no means saying that low porosity hair is not dry. That is not what I'm saying. I'm asking you to judge the damage by these pictures and not the dryness. But also keep in mind that dryness is caused by damage and abuse. With damage does come dryness. But it could absolutely be that you have virgin hair, you've never straightened your hair, you've never colored your hair, but it is really dry and lifeless. So again, I'm telling you, judge the level of damage, not the dryness only. So now, hopefully, you have a good idea of what your hair porosity is. If you don't, then try the experiments that I spoke about in this video and hopefully you'll come to an answer. Now, if you don't come to an answer and you're still thoroughly confused, this is my advice to you. You need to ask yourself about the porosity of your hair to be able to take care of it properly. Now, once you start CGM and you start taking care of your hair, because Guys, come on, the amount of time and effort and thought process that we're putting into our hair now, I don't think we've ever done it before in our lives, right? So, you need to know your hair porosity to be able to take care of your hair really well. But, in time, 
when you start taking care of your hair and you start experimenting then the question of porosity will automatically get answered in your head but it cannot happen on day one because like I said we are very 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 bad judges when it comes to ourselves that is just totally normal as human beings so the more you take care of your hair and the more you experiment with techniques, with products, with product amounts, with different formulas, water-based, oil-based, you will automatically come to the conclusion of what your hair porosity is. But why did I not make this video before? Well, because on month one, month two, month three, month four, you don't need to focus on your hair porosity. All you have to do at this point in time is to just experiment. Experiment with different formulas. Experiment with the amount of conditioner, with stylers. Experiment with your technique. And by the time you get to month six and seven, because look, you're washing your hair only once a week, right? So by the time you get to month six and seven, you will automatically be able to answer this question. If you're on month one and month two and you're preoccupied with this question, then it's just going to make your journey very difficult and very long and very hard. Because trust me, when you're following CGM, we live for those little aha moments. They're so beautiful. They're so enlightening. And these are things that are going to make you fall in love with your journey. So do not let the question of hair porosity stump you and befuddle you. I would say just experiment and slowly you're going to get there and once you have your aha moment, it is going to be oh so satisfying. All right, so that is all that I had to tell you about hair porosity. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and gained some value from it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment because it does help me out quite a bit with engagement. Subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Michelle and I will see you in the next one.